Hello and welcome to SMA Talks, a monthly series where Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Brinston, discusses important topics that directly impact the day-to-day -day business of the U.S. Army. This month, our topic is on the E3B program, a new approach of combining required events for earning the Expert Infantryman Badge, Expert Field Medical Badge, and Expert Soldier Badge. We also have a special guest, Sergeant Major Philip Blaisdell, with the Department of the Army's G3. SMA and Sergeant Major Blaisdell, thank you for being here. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having us. So how did the E3B program come about? Well, it really started when uh, 10th Mountain Division really said, hey, how, how do we combine all these together? And they said, hey, let's try it. So uh, we had to first have, you know, three different badges. So it really even started before 10th Mountain actually put them all together. So about four or five years ago, we ran our first expert soldier badge and we awarded the first badges at AUSA in October of 2019. So then we had those three badges and then we thought it would be really good if we could just combine them all together. So it'd make it easier on an organization to actually execute them. So originally what you would do is, you know, expert infantry badge, the infantry brigade shuts down and, you know, works on it really hard and then full stop. And then later at some other time, don't know when you had the expert field medical badge. Uh, and that was run a lot of the times through your medical service personnel. They would take the whole installation to do it. And when I, we did one in Baumholder it took, like all of Europe come to one location, expert field medical badge. And then we had this expert soldier badge, just kind of relatively new. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we combined all that? So the resources would all have to be there for one event. You wouldn't have to have three. So it saves you time, saves you some resources. So I really thank to uh, Sergeant Major Tranis for kind of trying this out and becoming more efficient. Uh, but I'm really excited that uh, we could pull that all together. But we're still not there yet. We still got a lot of work to do. We do. Uh, you know, the being an infantryman, being a part of the expert infantryman badge my entire career, you know, either took me two times to get it. And this also gives uh, soldiers another opportunity within a division to, oh, I didn't get it this time, but I got it all in my head. I'm good. I can take it again with 2nd Brigade, a 3rd Brigade. Um, and, and then 80 I think 83% of the tasks with EIB and ESB are the same. Uh, that's a lot of resources and time uh, and commitment and, and, and training. And also going back, when you get your annual train, uh, commander's training guidance, you know when it's going to be. So you start training sergeant's time and getting up to that. And then it's not just about a branch anymore. It's about being an expert soldier, uh, you know, proving that you are an expert at your profession as a soldier. So it, it's a fantastic concept. And even if you don't have an E3B with all three badges, you know, E2B, uh, we did one in Alaska with uh, just EIB and ESB. Um, so so we're, we're moving forward and, and things are looking good. And I think it's the future of how we run these. So what are some of the changes to the testing events? Well, the, holistically, I'm not sure there's a whole bunch of changes to the testing events. And like Sergeant Major just said, a lot of the the same tasks are, you know, in the expert soldier badge and the expert infantry badge. Now, clearly for the expert field medical badge, there's a lot more mm -hmm. medical tasks, but there's still some medical tasks, you know, for every soldier to know in the expert soldier badge and expert infantry badge. It's really about combining the resources to set up these training events, they're usually very similar in nature. So you have out in the field, you have support. So imagine you don't have to have the, you know, the person that's gonna bring out the child to the site. So you're just gonna bring it out once. Uh, so a lot of the tasks were similar to what they had before for the expert field medical badge, expert if true badge, and the expert soldier badge. They still have a proponent. Uh, so we're not here to tell the proponent what they want to do. So uh, the infantry school at Fort Benning still says, here's what the tasks are for the extra infantry badge. But it's just making them more efficient. So when we do that, um, all those resources are together. And where we find common tasks, you have 
one instructor that can just go ahead and grade those tasks. And if it requires a different instructor, you just go to that lane for expert field medical badge. And a lot of them at the end have a foot march, a 12 mile foot march. They all have that. So again, you don't have to do it, you know, set it up three different times. You get to set it up once. So basically the task didn't change. We just made our badges more efficient. And when you do that, you can give more opportunities, like Sergeant Major was talking about, to go execute that. We could always execute expert empty badge with a different unit, but because we've kind of simplified it, um, you can do all three of those, then you can have more frequency in, we, in the way we do that. And I think that's the most important piece of that. Yeah, you know, um, the the when we ran the E3B in Alaska, it was all, everyone was involved. That entire brigade, that's all they did for, for a month. Um, and, and, and also, you know, building cohesive teams. A lot of, uh, you know, not every brigade is all infantry. IBCT is all infantry. There's engineers, there's all these other MOS, they're together uh, out there, uh, meeting each other, training together as cohesive teams. Uh, so it's, it really, uh, it's, and it just streamlined the whole thing. And it, some of the tasks are, are MOS related. You know, I don't, I don't need a, a badge holder to teach medical tasks. I even have a 68 whiskey. They just have to be validated by the EIB committee. So all, all that combining that into one, uh, it's just so much easier. I didn't never knew when the EFMB was happening. When I was doing EIB, I was worried about EIB. You know, and then expert soldier badge came, which I was a fan so SMA uh, from the beginning. It's just, it's amazing that we're every soldier can 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 earn the right to be an expert at the profession, and to watch them pin that badge on, it's priceless. Yeah, and I think uh, the a little bit more on the way forward with this is to not take you know forty five days to execute the you know, either EIB or expert soldier badge or expert field medical badge. What we're trying to do is that you would complete the task in, um, in your squad and you would say, I've, you know, I've done the task, load, fire, and reduce the stoppage, and I've done it to standard, and I upload that task into the digital training management system. Mm -hmm. So I've completed the task. So I know how to do the, execute the task and I don't need a big web, you know, the site and everybody out there to go do that. So in a period of a few months, you go ahead and implement that I've executed those tasks to standard. And then now we just need to test you. Mm -hmm. So all that preparation that we used to do, we used to do that on the lane. You would just have to stay out there day after day and practice on the lane. The goal of this would be that you wouldn't have to sit out there on the lane. Your squad leader or someone in your unit would validate that you've done that task, kind of check off on it. And then the ultimate validation would be to go to the lane. And that shortens the amount of time that we'd have to set this up. So units were before setting it up for 45, 60 days. Now the goal is to get this down to a couple of weeks and you just go out and validate it. And then you can do it more often as opposed to when you got to set it up for 60 days, you can only do that once or twice in like two years. You do it once in two years. So uh, again, what 10th Mountain did was you did the task, you come out, they set it up for 10 days, you tested, you got it or you didn't. But because it was only 10 days, they could go ahead and do that. They ran three in one year. So imagine where in the past, most posts would have done that once every two years. So you get a lot more reps and sets. So you mentioned, you know, the frequency, the tempo changes, stuff like that. So from these changes, have you seen any improvement for the soldiers? Yeah, that's the, the ultimate goal of this is where do you get the badge or not is to make you a better soldier. And you can see, you know, as we have less, you know, combat veterans, you know, you would get your combat infantry badge or you got your combat action badge, you know, so um, we want to see more of this. We want to see you go out and attempting it. And even if you don't get the badge, you're going to be better trained in your warrior task and battle drills. And that's the ultimate goal is how do we stay sharp on those tasks in the event we do go to combat? So whether you get the badge or not, the goal is to actually go. Don't be afraid to go out there to the site, uh, do your training, 
and then uh, test to see that you can be an expert in your field. But ultimately, this is to, to make us more a legal force. You know, the, we found SMA and the Global War on Terror, 20 years of war, there, there was no front lines. You know, we, every, no matter what, public affairs, uh, no matter who you were, when you left that secure perimeter, your FOB patrol base, you had to be ready to fight. Uh, so, so this is just for all soldiers, you know, whether you're infantry, medical, or, or PAO, you can go out and prove you're an expert in your profession. And it's not about, it's about the reps and sets. It's not about the badge. It's about the training. How do you see this being applied across the Army? I, I'm really excited about this is because, you know, now units, when you put this together and you do all three of those badges together, we can actually bring uh, different units together and say, here's where I can go. I'm, I know that it, I'm a medic and maybe I'm in the Army National Guard in Kansas. I know Fort Riley is going to do an expert in E3B. So I don't have to wait for my state to set up the expert field medical badge. I can go to this site and kind of test on all three on any of those badges. So it makes us, you know, stronger and a better army. Um, so all you have to do, if a unit wants to do this, we pushed it down to a battalion level too. Mm -hmm. So before, a lot of times this was run at the brigade, but. And uh, most people say, no, it has to be done at grade. That's not actually true. There's a lot of battalions that could run this. It's a lot of resources, uh, but you can do it at the battalion level. So if you wanted to set up, you know, a badge, no matter where you're at, you, if you're doing all three of them, you got to contact the, the infantry school, CIMT and uh, the med, MedCom. So you have all representation there. So they validate your lane, um, but it, it just makes it, um, easier for you to go to any site regardless of your MOS and you would like to go to another unit just contact that unit said I know you're doing E3B and can I come out and test and I, I've never said no I've done this at uh, mm -hmm. Fort Riley we've done this at bomb holder I've done this it's, as a, a lot of posts I've been to every post I've been to um, but when you only do one badge it's almost like you feel excluded if well I I can't get the expert infantry badge, so when can I test my skills? So um, it's designed to, to be a little bit lower echelon, so we could kind of set this up uh, if you have the resources at a battalion, and then go out and contact those units and, and see if you can test. We had, um, in the 90s, we, we did battalion, but everybody had an EIB because no one had... Yeah. Uh, CIBs. Uh, so, you know, it was like uh, for the infantry, it was, uh, you know, you had to get it. It was, it was a pride thing, a uh, pride of your branch. And, and, you know, now we're moving forward. But the, I remember I had a, a, a I was in Egypt at uh, MFO and we had a cook that was attached to my squad, uh, Special Norman. He's part of my squad. Everything we did, he did PT with us, everything. Well, we went to do EIB. And I asked, I said, can Norman come through with this? And, oh, well, you know, he can go through, but he can never wear the badge if he gets it. Plus, you probably won't get it. Well, he, guess who got earned his EIB? That specialist, that, that 92 Golf. And he, and he wore it under, he got it sewn up under his lapel. And whenever he saw us, he, he'd flip it up and show, hey, look at it. He was so proud of that. You know, and now we're, 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 anyone can go and prove they're an expert. He doesn't have to hide it anymore, which uh, really makes me proud. And then streamlining this. You know, our soldiers, they want to do it, especially when they, and you know, SMA, when, when they fail, you know, like it's so close to grenade. Yeah. You know, there's some, there's some events that are hard for some folks and they, they want to go back, you know, the Sergeant Major, I think uh, they'll go on the website. I think Fort Benning's running. Can I go down there? <laughs> TDY. Yeah. I was like, man, I wish I could send you, but now we don't have to, you know, and Sergeant Major trying us, he proved that up at Tent Mountain where we, Okay, hey, first brigade, he didn't get it. He was that close. Let's send him over to second brigade. Um, so this is uh, this is great to see, and I'm glad it's happening. Yeah, I can really see in maybe five, ten years, if you're a first sergeant or a CSM in any unit, you're going to have an expert uh, soldier badge. You're going to have expert infantry badge, expert soldier badge, or expert field medical badge. I think that's going to be when you look across the Army leaders, um, 10 to 15 years from now, that's going to be expected. Um, just like in an infantry unit, if you're a first sergeant or a CSM, it was pretty much expected yeah. that you had an expert uh, infantry badge. 
And I think the goal is that, you know, when you look across and you look at your leaders and you look at your first sergeant or battalion CSM, they either have one of those three badges. Well, uh, SMA and Sergeant Major Blaisdell, any parting thoughts for the viewers? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this program. We've seen our numbers increase from our expert badges, um, probably by about 1,000 yeah. last year. And the goal is to have even more next year. Uh, we really do need leaders to go out and allow their soldiers to go. We need leaders to go ahead and put this on the schedule. Um, we're going to see a better Army you know, because of this. And again, it's not about getting a badge. It's to having an expert soldier in your field, uh, regardless of what your MOS is. And you want those. So if, if we do have to go to that large scale combat, do you know your warrior task and battle drills at a level, um, you know, to be an expert? And I think this is uh, what we need to do and for the future of the Army. So I'm really excited about this program. I think the, uh, the NCO strategy, you know, highly trained, disciplined, physically fit soldiers for life. And this is really getting after that uh, cohesive teams. And there's no better feeling as a leader when you pin that EIB on your soldiers. Yeah. You know, and, you, and it's, it's a pride thing. And uh, I think that's everything that the, in the Army we're looking at right now is, is building those cohesive teams, those squads. Uh, and even with the, the ESB, uh, whether you're in a S1 shop or you know, you're in an S4 shop, wherever you work, you have an opportunity to prove that you're an expert in your profession as a soldier. Well, thank you, SMA and Sergeant Major Blaisdell. And thanks to those watching online right now. If you have any questions for the SMA or ideas of for future episodes, leave them in the comment section or use hashtag SMA Talks on Twitter and Instagram.